Okay, I'm going to call this meeting of the House Finance Committee to order. Let the record reflect that the time is currently 10.06 a.m. on Thursday, November 2, 2017. Present today, we have a full house. Representative Ortiz, Representative Pruitt, Representative Kawasaki, Representative Wilson, Vice Chair Guerra, uh, Co-Chair Seaton, Representative Tilton, Representative Gren, Representative Guttenberg, Representative Thompson, and myself, Co-Chair Foster. And before we start, just a reminder, folks who please mute their cell phones. At this meeting, we'll hear SB 54, which is the Crime and Sentencing Bill. And it's my uh, plan to take uh, amendments and to move the bill from uh, House Finance today. And at this time, I'd like to begin the amendment process. We have in the audience or online the various departments to answer technical questions regarding the amendments. And we also have available Hillary Martin from Legislative Legal Services. Um, so before we begin the amendment process, any questions? No questions. Okay. So we have, of course, uh, amendment number one. Uh, Representative Seaton, can I have a motion to bring amendment number one for the committee? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move amendment number one, which is uh, T.17. Object. And Coacher Seaton, there's been an objection. Please explain your amendment. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is a technical amendment to fix a drafting error that occurred as a result of the House Judiciary Conceptual Amendment in Judiciary deleting inflation adjustment of the monetary amounts from the statute was originally part of Amendment Number 37, but a conceptual amendment removed that part of the amendment, leaving inflation adjustment in the statute unchanged. Legislative legal conformed this with the conceptual amendment in all but one section. And so amendment number one would conform with the intent of the judiciary conceptual amendment and would leave inflation uh, adjustment uh, in all sections unchanged in the current statute. Thank you, Representative Seaton. It sounds like this is a technical amendment. Are there any questions, Representative Pruitt? Yeah, just real quick question. Um, so I just want to make sure I understand. I, I see where it is in in this, and I think it's related specifically to C felonies and the A misdemeanors. Is this um, is this referring to all theft or just um, is it? Really, I, I guess the question is: Was it? Are we? Are, is it related to all theft? I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I, I didn't see that portion, so I just want to make sure. What were they trying to fully do that they, they kind of missed it? Is there other places where we, where we still have inflation adjustment and then it was just in these two areas that we did not? Representative Seaton? Uh, yeah, thank you for the question. Yes, the inflation adjustment was added back in for all sections in the conceptual amendment, but it didn't get added in drafting. Uh, to all sections, there was one section that was missed, and that's the section that is uh, provided for in these two references, adding what was intended in the conceptual amendment They got missed in the drafting. <coughs> Any further questions? Mm -hmm. Seeing no further questions, do you maintain your objection, Representative Pruitt? No. Okay, the objection has been withdrawn. Are there any further objections? See no further objections. Um, amendment number one, which is 30 LS0461 backslash T for Tango dot one seven is adopted. And so with that, we'll move over to amendment number two. Representative Seaton, can I have a motion to bring amendment number two before the committee? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move amendment number two, which is T dot two seven. Are there any objections? Just for discussion. Okay, Representative Wilson objects for the purposes of discussion. Representative Seaton, if you could explain your amendment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this amendment addresses the ambiguity around the sentencing for theft in the fourth degree, as pointed out in the October 27th memo that all members received from Legislative Legal. As a result of the amendment N.23 in Judiciary, SB 54 now contains two different sentencing structures for the same crime, and that crime is a third offense of theft in the fourth degree. Uh, and just for um, everybody's understanding, that is theft under $250 uh, value, and that is a B misdemeanor. The concern is that the first sentence um, 
is for the third offense, and that is under Section 19 of the bill, which states that the third offense of the fourth of theft in the fourth degree is up to 10 days um, of active imprisonment, which is an increase uh, from the five days on the second offense, but it is still considered to uh, be misdemeanor. The, the second way in which the sentence could be carried out is that it's for the third offense is under uh, sections one and two of the bill, which says that a person that commits a crime in theft of the third degree, which is an A dis a misdemeanor, would be zero to 30 days. And if that is their third offense or more, uh, the if and again, that's under $250, which is normally theft in the fourth degree. Having two sentences for the same crime creates ambiguity and would lead to an equal protection claim. So this amendment changes the point at which a step up in theft from the fourth degree B, B misdemeanor it, to theft in the third degree and A misdemeanor is from the third offense having two priors to now having the fourth offense having three priors. So this would um, leave in place um, the Third offense is only charged at one spot, and that's up to 10 days in jail for a as a Class B misdemeanor. But it keeps the spirit of the House Judiciary Amendment because the sentence increases with each offense and still converts to a higher crime, a Class A misdemeanor. It's just after the fourth offense. So a question from Representative Wilson. So, Mr. Chairman, do we need the conceptual amendment here before we withdraw our, before I withdraw my objection. Oh, we have a conceptual amendment here. Yeah, we do. Uh, yes. Um, and, Mr. Chairman, I'd, I'd like to offer conceptual amendment one to amendment number two, which is on uh, members' desk, and that's changing page 12, line 23, following the word two, to delete or more. Thank you, Representative Seaton. Are there any objections to the conceptual amendment number one to amendment number two? Uh, let me object just to ask questions. Representative Pruitt. Um, I think I understand the initial, I'm trying to, I just want to make sure I understand the impact of the, of the conceptual. If it's on the third one that, that we plan on them, it elevating to that misdemeanor A, is the intent that after that third one, that automatically any other one, like like this is almost duplicative, we don't need this, that anything higher than the third would be considered um, a misdemeanor A. And if, if that's the case, is, is, this, uh, is this conceptual amendment actually necessary or is it, um, I guess, is it, is it necessary? Does or more still work? Representative uh, Seaton. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And th the reason it's necessary is because then we know where, t where two is, and we know where three is, and we know where four offenses are. But if, if in the statute we're referencing two or more, the interpretation is that it could still be a B if it's two or more instead of going to an A at the fourth time, because four, four offenses is greater than two. So. Okay, thank you. Are there any further questions on the conceptual amendment? Seeing none, conceptual amendment number one to amendment number two is adopted, so we are back to amendment number two. Are there any questions on amendment number two? Mr. Chair, you still have an objection on the... Uh, and the objection is removed. Um, Representative Wilson, did you have a question on Representative... Uh, no, I'll just remove my two? objection um, on amendment number two as amended. As amended. Okay, are there any... Uh, reps, uh, is that an objection to amendment number two? The no, objection has been withdrawn. Representative uh, Guttenberg. So just just for procedural, we adopted the amendment. No, we didn't adopt it. We adopted it. Uh, we adopted Guttenberg. the conceptual amendment. We Thank the you. Conceptual amendment. And now, can we just pass the amendment just by withdrawing the objection to the original amendment? Correct. Amendment. Yes. I'm all right. Okay. All right. Okay. Just making sure we've got it right. Thank you. Okay. Do you remove your objection to amendment number two? I wasn't giving an objection. Oh, uh, in order to have 
in order to have discussion, I gave you an objection. Okay, so with that, are there any further objections on amendment number two? As amended. As amended, As amended with conceptual amendment number one. Seeing none, um, amendment number two is adopted. So we'll move on to amendment number three. Representative Seaton, if I could have a motion to move amendment number three. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I move amendment number three, which is T.30. Okay, are there any objections? Object. We have an objection. Representative Wilson, would you, or Representative Seaton, would you speak to your amendment? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this amendment makes an adjustment to a change made uh, in Judiciary Committee creating a s list of specific C felonies that can be held for up to 48 hours before pretrial release, even if that individual had been assessed at a low risk <coughs> using an assessment tool. And that's if the prosecution requests more time. Under current statute, this 48-hour prosecutorial hold provision applies to all C felonies, all felonies except C felonies if the individual is assessed as a low risk. In judiciary, they created a list of specific C felonies which were exceptions to that rule, meaning that they could now be held for additional time even if they were low risk. However, the judiciary list did not include all crimes against persons, and it did not include some non and it did include some nonviolent crimes such as witness tampering. Amendment number three modifies the list of C felonies that can be held for additional time to cover all crimes against the person, all sex offenses, and domestic violence crimes, failure to appear, and DWIs. This ensures a broader range of crimes against the person are, are covered. It also aligns this section with other C felony exemptions or carve outs that exist in the pretrial section of the law, which will reduce possible confusion and contradictions uh, for the courts or the attorneys. And uh, to be clear what this does, it aligns the C felonies that are not eligible for automatic release on your under their own recognizance. So this means that those lists, the pretrial list and this list for, for longer hold uh, will be the same. And so, uh, Mr. Chairman, that's um, the ex explanation of the amendment. Thank you, Representative Seaton. Are there any questions of the committee? Seeing no questions, uh, do you maintain your objection, Representative Wilson? No, I withdraw my Objection. The objection is removed. Are there any further objections? Seeing no objections, amendment number three, which is 30-LS046 backslash T.30 is adopted. Moving on to amendment number four.